Hi, I wanted to thank you for doing this real quick before we get started. It's going to be really helpful for my own research for my group project that I'm working on. Um, so today I'd like you to first introduce yourself and then I'll get into what the topic would be. Okay, great. My name is Michael Zamudo and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Completed.com and I'm also a startup executive. I've been part of a number of uh, technology startups and tech companies. Great. So the topic today for a few questions would be... Um, how exactly, or the tech field, tech startups, and then how a young person could approach that field. <clears throat> so I'd first like to ask you what advice you'd give to a young person who's looking to get into the field of tech startups. Yeah, that's a good question. So um, well, I could give really long answers to that. I could talk for hours. But, but let me break it down to sort of um, maybe three things, right? The, the first I'd say is, you know, be really ready for what it really entails. Have realistic expectations. Number two, do things at every step to make sure you're swimming upstream because it's really difficult. And number three, um, you know, be sort of aware of your natural inclinations and be able to, you know, make decisions contrary to that. So let me explain what I mean by these things. Um, when I say be really ready, a lot of people don't really understand what it's like to start a startup. You know, this, this sort of picture you know, the, the outlier fun end games of selling an Instagram or something like that, right? And getting famous and, yeah. you know, being on TV or whatever. But you have to go into it expecting the more, you know, common outcome and the more, you know, frequent experiences of starting a startup. So, um, you know, uh, great advice I got early on is, you know, you, you don't go into a startup expecting to make money. Right, huh. you're you going to start up expecting you're going to lose money. Right, you can make more money working for a big company or consulting or something like that. Um, you don't go into it expecting to get famous. You're more likely to toil in obscurity at least for a very long time. You know, you don't uh, go into it expecting to have you know a great fun lifestyle. You know, being a part of a startup means you know much longer hours. It, it also, by the way, is a lot more stressful. You take responsibility for raising money and for paying people and for paying vendors and partners and things like that. And that could be a great deal of stress. I mean, the entirety of this business you're creating sits on your shoulders and it's a big responsibility. Now, I don't say any of this stuff to discourage people from doing startups. I've done a bunch of them. You know, frankly, the whole experience of the, the adrenaline rush and excitement of creating something from scratch and seeing people see it for the first time is amazingly rewarding. It really, really is amazingly rewarding. But you've got to go into it with the right kind of expectations. You're not only trying to start a business, which is challenging enough of itself, a lot of times you're trying to you know, create an entirely new solution to something or change the way people do some part of their life. And, and while that's fun and aspirational, it's also incredibly, incredibly difficult. And the reason why you have to prepare yourself for all this you know, challenges and downside is you will not persist through it. You will not persist through it um, if you're not prepared for that stuff, okay? Because there will be things that don't work. I've personally never seen a startup that got successful doing exactly what they planned to do when they were writing the idea down on the back of a napkin, figuratively speaking, right? It's always some pivot to something related or maybe entirely different. And there's just downsides. You're going to almost run out of money or almost run out of time and people are going to give up on you and, yeah. and criticize what you do and you know, not believe in you and ignore you and things like that. And you have to be prepared for that stuff because if you're not prepared for it, reasonable people will quit and go do something more predictable and reliable and safe and so on. Right? And, and frankly, that's what most people should do. The country has got a lot of startups. And it's not for people who are not prepared for it. So, you know, be really ready for what a startup entails. Number two, you know, the whole swim upstream thing. So wherever possible, try to do everything you can to, you know, line up so that you've got success. You know, try to get everything to line up. I think a big part of that is choosing the right location for your startup. Uh, it can be a, a bigger challenge to start up an organization um, in, in an area that doesn't have great infrastructure and support mechanisms for it, having the wrong people or too little capital or whatever. So you want to line all those things up and make sure you're, you know, you're not swimming upstream, you're swimming downstream the whole time, right? You know, you're, you've got as many things on your side to make your job easier as possible because there's a lot of things that will make it difficult. 
Um, and then the third thing is, uh, you know, be aware of your natural inclination. So for example, a lot of startup founders are product and technology people. It's very common. They have a product vision, they have a solution vision, and they pursue that. And they find something that gets some market acceptance, uh, and they're very proud of their product. And, and what has to happen at that point is you really have to pivot and start thinking exclusively about you know, generating more market acceptance, right? And, and focusing on sales and marketing and promotion and things like that. And what I've found is really frequently that can be tough because that same product focus, product visionary person, you know, wants to stay focused on product. And once they've got a valid marketable product that's getting market acceptance, they need to sell that, you know, which means they need to change what they're doing. And part of being a startup executive is being what the company needs you to be at that time, you know. So you can't continue to product innovate your way to, uh, to success. You know, um, I mean, once, you know, this is a terrible example, once Apple created the iPhone, right, it put huge resources and brains and intelligence into marketing it. You know, they had to do both things really well. And a lot of very product design or technology focused founders, you know, often don't want to switch modes like that and it causes them some, um, some real headaches. That was very in-depth and very honest, honestly. You answered a lot of the questions that I had had lined up. So and I think we're actually going to be running out of time right now. So thank you very much for the very in-depth answer that you just gave. You're this is very helpful. Thank you.